Greetings to you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to Shakespeare's YouTube channel. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, software engineering and um, the software process. But we are going to start. Um, let me go to the first slide. So it's different. Right, we're going to talk about um, software process. What is it? Uh, what do you mean by uh, software process model? We've talked about, we've talked about this um, some time ago, but we're going to uh, revisit this and talk a, talk a bit about uh, some of the concepts involved so that I add some flesh to the skeleton that I've uh, given to you. Right. Um, the software process, what is it generally? It's, it's just a, a, a some they call it um, software development model, uh, software development lifecycle model. Uh, um, and here we are defining the so a software process as a, an abstract representation of a process. It represents a description of a process from some particular perspective. So it, it, it um, it's just a set of uh, structured activity. It's just a set of structured uh, set of activities uh, required to develop a software system. So uh, this software process model it consists of several activities depending on the application or depending on the uh, software that you want to develop. The activities may normally you need to have the following. Um, uh, activities, uh, the specification, you need to, 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 to specify the requirements of the system. You have to specify the functional and non-functional requirements of the system. Uh, that's on the specification. And uh, normally uh, we, we come up with uh, a, a requirement specification document as an output of this activity. And then we go to design then on design that's where you may actually come up with uh, a number of uh, uh, visuals or maybe uh, pseudocodes or textual textual um, deliverables so the deliverable that you come up with from design you may actually come up with a data flow uh, entity relation diagram or erd you may come up with um, system flow diagram you may come up with pseudo codes so those are the deliverables of uh, system design you may come up with a block diagram depending on what you want to come up with so for this since i know that i'm dealing with uh, uh, engineers mostly you come up with block diagram showing the hardware components that you want to assemble together to come up with the machine or uh, the, the, the system that you are about to develop. So that's what we do on design. And then we then go to validation or verification. I'm just giving you some basic activities that you find in a software process. And then validation and verification. That's where you now say, uh, is the system actually achieving uh, the set goals? Is the system actually um, doing what the client is requested? So that's what we'll be doing on validation or, and or verification. Then we have evolution. The moment you complete a system, requirements will ever, uh, will ever be changing. So what we mean by this is, as time goes on, your system becomes obsolete because of several factors such as changes in technology and advancement in terms of business operations. So since we need to maintain or to ensure business continuity, you then need to make sure that your system evolves um, as uh, requirements and other factors come into play. So a software process is just an abstract representation of a process. 
it represents a description of a process from some particular perspective as shown on the slide there. Right, uh, we have generic uh, uh, process models. We have waterfall, uh, which separate and dis uh, which is a separate and distinct, uh, which consists of separate and distinct phases of uh, specification and development. You will see from the diagram as we we're talking about it: evolutional development, specification development are interleaved, and then we have formal systems development. We have reuse based development these four are just the basics that i've selected to show you on this uh, slide but we have got more with incremental with many many other uh, uh, models that we can make use of in coming up with a software so we are going to talk about these four and maybe incremental as an additional um, model waterfall model it's it just follows the way water uh, falls uh, from top to bottom. So the first uh, item is problem identification followed by, uh, so problem identification will output a statement of a problem when it comes to research and uh, software development uh, project. Then the next, uh, the next step is uh, requirements definition. And here, that's why we have a software or system requirements specification document as a deliverable. And then we have system and software design. Here, we've talked about the design uh, having a number of um, deliverables, such as uh, the diagrams, ERDs, uh, system flow diagram, data flow diagram, um, use case diagrams uh erds and stuff and stuff pseudo codes and stuff and stuff those are the deliverables that come out of um system and software design where we will have um what we are calling um a block diagram for specifically made for for those that are that normally come up with hardware systems then implementation and uh, unity testing this phase consists of writing the actual codes. At this stage, that's where the actual code is being written. So the output definitely is a set of instructions that tells what a computer tells a computer hardware what to do. So that's where we write the actual instructions, the actual code in Java, the actual code in C, the actual code in C++, the actual code in um in 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 c sharp and stuff and stuff and then the unit testing that's where we are testing individual modules of your system for example let's say we have a registration module we have a login module we have a a, a module which actually accepts payment so unit testing will be testing each module as a unit and then we go to integration and system testing that's why we are now saying after registration is the system going to recognize that uh, the registered user can now log in is the system able to use all of the assembled hardware and software that's where we are saying we are now saying integration and system testing and then uh, operation and maintenance that's where we are now saying we've deployed our system and we are now maintaining it uh, allowing it to evolve as time goes on and as requirements are changing and then we have to, to revisit some of the steps depending on uh, what we observe at each stage so problems of order for software process model it's not flexible uh it's not flexible so it's inflexible um and um inflexible partitioning of the project into distinct stages make it uh makes it uh, difficult to respond to changing customer requirements so mostly we use this when we know almost everything that is required in each and every stage of um, this model 
that's all this model is only appropriate when the requirements are well understood that's, that's what i was saying now we have uh, another one which is evolutionary development yeah here we out, outline the description of our requirements mostly what starts is um problem identification and then we get to outlining of the description then concurrent activities meaning these activities may happen at the same time uh, requirement specification uh, development and then validation these activities are done at the same time and we come up with our initial version we repeat the same activities we get an intermediate version or uh, many intermediate versions up until we get to the final version so that's uh, evolution uh, evolutionary development for you so this one uh, is more like exploratory development because what we are doing is the initial version is sent to the client and the client looks at it and make uh, some test runs and give you feedback and then you get feedback from the client and then you make changes accordingly so um it is its objective is to work with customers and to evolve a final system from an initial outline so development starts with the well understood uh, parts of the system so that's where we have throwaway prototyping the initial version may not be used in the real environment or in the real time or in the live environment so its objective is to understand the system requirements not to achieve organizational goals so the objective is to work with customers problems associated is lack, lack of process visibility you may not actually see you know, the, 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 the processes involved final vision prototype is often poorly structured special skills in languages for rapid prototyping may be required so what normally happens is clients when we specify requirements they are specified in natural language so the natural language that we are talking about is the english language that we normally use some they use their uh, mother language to specify the, the system requirements and most of the languages natural languages what they do is they leave some gaps what the client is trying to say is not what uh, the developer will understand depending on the wording therefore that's why we normally make use of diagrams that's why, why we normally make use of prototypes and stuff and stuff so that's the problem associated with this uh, kind of uh, model and then it's applicable for small and medium sized uh, interactive systems and it's for parts of large systems for instance let's say you just want to come up with a user interface or you just want to develop for a specific hardware part of the system and it's for short life life uh, span systems in case of exploratory development and then we have spiral this is the spiral um, model of software process so you can see that it has got loops first loop up to the last loop so the first loop is uh, considered to be a, a complete phase and then we get to the second loop which, which becomes the second iteration as we proceed to the final uh, item so the first thing is we start with the review we analyze the risk we develop a prototype the prototype is may actually be a simulation or a model or a benchmark and then we visualize the system concept of operation is analyzed and then requirements plan life cycle plan that's the first loop and then we repeat the same coming up with the second scene second prototype where software requirements uh, requirement validation development plan all these activities are done and then third prototype is developed we now look at product design design and valid design validation and verification and then we do integration and test plan then the last risk analysis 
operational prototype. By operational prototype, it's just a prototype, but this one is the final prototype that we have developed. So that's why we're saying it's operational prototype. It's going to be deployed and be used in a business environment. And then we talk about detailed design, code, unity test, integration test, acceptance test, and everything else to finalize the deployment of our operational prototype. So this is what they call the BOEMS uh, spiral development. It has got some quadrants, objective setting, risk assessment, uh, development and validation, and then planning. All these I've, I've actually talked about these. Then reuse, uh, reuse based development. This one from the term itself, it's, telling, it's talking about reusing a set of instructions or reusing some programs, some software programs in coming up with our new system. So there are so many sources where we can get some software programs to make use of or to, or to, 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 to reuse. So the, 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 the steps, requirements, specification, we now know the deliverable, component analysis, the requirements, modification, system design with reuse. That's where we now make use of code from some other programmers, from internal programmers, or our own code. That's where we do system design with uh, uh, reuse. Development and integration. We are now joining the software programs to make one system. And then system validation, that's the final stage. And then after that, we deploy our project. So involved units, procedures or functions common for past 40 years. Then we have components, component-based development, core elements of an application, then entire applications. Then may also be based on use of design patterns, process stages, reuse, software analysis, requirements, modification, system design with reuse, development and integration. And then we have formal systems. Formal systems, they start with the requirements definition. So you can see that requirements specification is common in all models. Then we followed by formal specification, formal transformation, integration and system testing. And it has got these problems, need for specialized skills and training to apply the technique. Difficult to formally specify some aspects of the system, such as the user interface and stuff. Then it's applicable in critical systems, especially those where a safety or security case must be made before the system is put into operation, critical parts of large systems. And then um, formal systems development, they are based on the transformation of mathematical what, what, mathematical specification through different representations to an executable program. So for instance, you guys, you may need to implement a system that uh, makes use of or that implements a differential equation. That's where you actually need to make use of formal systems development. And now let's talk about uh, the incremental. From the term incremental, it's actually something that we already have and it's incrementing, it's growing in terms of size, functionality and other terms. So define outline requirements, assign requirements to increments, define design system architecture, develop system increment, validate increment, integrate increment, validate system. And until you come up with a final system, you may actually uh, repeat some of the stages. So rather than deliver the system as a single unit, the development and delivery is broken into increments each of which incorporates parts of the required functionality so user requirements are prioritized in the highest priority requirements are included in early increments so in each and every model user requirements are prioritized 
but sometimes when we are talking about critical systems or life critical systems you may not actually you may ignore some of the requirements by the user provided that those requirements may pose risk to human life so once the development of an increment is started its its requirements are frozen while requirements for later increments can continue to evolve so advantages useful functionality is delivered with each increment so here we are not throwing away the prototype the prototype is used in the business in a business environment as we develop another prototype which becomes an update to the previous prototype so early increments act as prototype to help elicit requirements so we are trying to gather requirements from the clients there is lower risk of overall project failure yeah because we are working closely with the client there's the priority system services tend to receive the most testing yeah potential problem requirements may not be partitionable into standalone increments yeah so that's software process for you thank you ladies and gentlemen for having a look at this uh, series of slides enjoy the rest of your day goodbye